Welcome to Biz Filing's Expert Insights. Hi, I'm Greg Corumbus. Our guest this week on Expert Insights is John Jantz. He's a veteran marketing coach and award-winning blogger. He's the author of Duct Tape Marketing, and his brand new book is The Self-Reliant Entrepreneur, which you can find at selfreliantentrepreneur.com. Today, John joins us to discuss the seven steps to small business marketing. And John, thanks so much for being with us. Hey, thanks for having me, Greg. Well, standing out as a small business, and specifically a small business, can be a daunting task, particularly if you have competitors in your field, which in most cases you will. And so step one is figuring out exactly who you want as a customer. You call it narrowing your market focus. How do you do that? A lot of times businesses are of the assumption if I'm a remodeling contractor that anybody has a home as a customer or if I'm an accounting firm that anybody who has to do their taxes as a customer. And what we find if we're in business for any amount of time is that there is probably a narrowly defined ideal customer, one who values what you do, that goes through your process, that has, the mean, that has first off, the problem that you're great at solving and the means to pay for that problem. And that's not everyone. And so figuring out who that is and then building your business and your messaging and your story really around attracting them and, and addressing the problems that they have is, is just step number one. And so positioning yourself as a bathroom remodeler as opposed to, hey, I'll fix anything, I'll, I'll, I'll redo anything in your house is actually going to get a better response because the instinct would be, well, if I cast a wide net, I'll get more people. That's right. And unfortunately, what happens with that is then, you know, then you're just kind of swimming in the same pond with everybody, you know, who says the same thing. But by having some narrow focus and, and it doesn't have to be, you know, I only fix bathrooms. It might just be, you know, it might be geographic. I work in this particular area or it actually might be somebody who is meticulous about design. Um, and that, you know, that's our specialty. In fact, we have an architect on staff so we can do a better job of designing your bathroom. So the, the key is to, is to figure out what you do well, figure out the problem you actually solve, and then go after the people you can deliver the most value for. Step two is positioning your business, figuring out what you do best and what that target market that you've defined in, in step one wants. And, and part of it is crafting a core marketing message that allows you to separate yourself from your competitors. So uh, yeah. explain how do you give yourself that edge. You betcha. So 90% of the websites out there, if you go there uh, the, above the fold, right when you get there, it's going to say, here's what we do. <laughs> you know, We're remodeling contractors or we're accounting firms or we're a plumber. I mean, we, we know that already. Um, and so all you're really doing is making yourself like everybody else you know, who is in that industry. What we want to do is find a way to address the, the major problem that our ideal client is trying to solve and make sure that above the fold, we're actually screaming, you know, we promise to solve your problem. You know, they, they, the people don't necessarily come to a website or look for a business. I mean, the assumption is if you're a tree service, for example, that you can cut down trees, that you know what you're doing, that you have the equipment uh, to do that. What we don't know is, are you going to show up on time? Are you going to clean up the job site? So, what we do is is we actually interview our clients' clients, and today, increasingly, we look at their reviews, particularly their five-star reviews, and what happens is we start hearing messages um, that, that really should be your core message. That, the example I gave you is a real one. Uh, we have a tree service that you know every single one of their reviews said they show up on time and they clean up the job site. Well, that's the problem that other tree services are not solving. And so that's the message that we lead with. And we, we obviously accentuate that and amplify that in, in all of our messaging. But above the fold, you're going to see we show up when we say we are going to and we clean up the job site because that's the problem that they really solve. Step three is creating education-based marketing materials. In other words, give them something for free, get them interested in what you do, and if they stay interested in what you do, then they'll come to you for actual business. Content, you know, is, is really the voice of strategy. It, it's not just, oh, we need to have a blog so we can write some stuff, so hopefully we attract some people. It, it is how you help people understand that you understand their problem, that you have a process to solve it. And a lot of times when when people are thinking about, say, for example, thinking about hiring a marketing consultant, which I am, they don't wake up usually and say, I think I'm going to go hire a marketing consultant. They start by saying, why are my competitors showing up ahead of me? How come I'm always competing on price? They're looking for answers to the problem, and we have to actually kind of lead them to the fact that, hey, a marketing consultant with a system like ours can actually solve your problem. 
Uh, but we're never going to get that chance unless unless we gain uh, the trust in order for them to say, yeah, these guys are different. Step four is never cold call. And it seems a little bit like step one. In other words, you want to narrow your focus. And in, in, in the beginning, it's figuring out who your customer is. And this one, it's don't advertise or, or market in a broad way. Figure out again who your customer is and figure out a way uh, to entice them. So just uh, putting out the the, hey, we do this ad isn't going to be as effective. So how do you tailor messages where people understand that, yes, this niche is exactly what I need right now? Well, so the, the idea behind Never Cold Call, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, ways in which we can, w- ways in which our prospects buy today is is the biggest thing that's changed. I mean, they don't have to listen to our messages. They don't have to get take our phone calls. They don't have, you know, they don't have to have their doors open to us to come walking straight in. I mean, they're, they're, they are in control and in, in charge of kind of how uh, they interact with uh, with anybody that's really trying to sell anything. So uh, the idea behind that is really more uh, along this idea of trust. So never cold call, uh, certainly, uh, you know, having somebody search online and find that customers are saying great things about you is an aspect of that. Having your customers, you know, talk about you and give referrals is an aspect of that. You know, you producing great content that that makes them want to come back next week and the next week, you know, is an aspect of that. And and that's really kind of the, the biggest point uh, that I was getting at is, you know, just just running. We have businesses that do this all the time. You know, just running Google AdWords ads is kind of like cold calling. You are going to get a percentage of the folks who have an immediate need maybe for what you do, but you're not going to get those what I think are probably more ideal uh, situations and customers where uh, they're going to come to know, like, and trust you and, and ultimately become advocates for you. Step five is earn media attention. Essentially, find out who the journalists are that cover what you do and, and be available to uh, be a source for, for their work, uh, whether it's TV or radio or print or Internet or whatever it is. Uh, in some businesses, that uh, obviously is fairly easy to do. If you're a, a doctor and it's flu season, you could be a, uh, obviously yeah. a source for, for – uh, someone in the media. If you run a craft shop, however, there's uh, not necessarily uh, major news stories that, that deal with that. So if it's not something that's uh, often in the news, how do you nudge your way in there? Today, you know, and, and again, some of these steps, you know, are universal, but they have evolved. Um, today, a huge part of earned media is social media. Sharing good things on social media, you know, having things to say that, that people want to share, having great content on your website that people want to link to, you know, is an important part of that idea of, of earning media. So it's not just the traditional publications. A lot of the traditional publications are, you know, are slowly dying and going away. Uh, but the idea of, of getting people to share and earning mentions um, has become a huge part of social media. Step six is to expect referrals. And essentially, this is kind of training your customers to become an ambassador for your business and uh, in turn, creating new clients and new customers for you. How do you get your customer in that mindset? Obviously, you have to be referable. They have to have a good experience. I mean, that's, you know, hopefully that goes without saying. But what a lot of organizations do is they do great work and they have a happy customer and they have a happy solution. And then, you know, maybe they go back 60 days later or once a year and say, hey, know anybody else who needs what we do? And sometimes that helps and works, but it, it's so out of context by that point. I like to tell people that you have to design your referral touch points. And the first one is is really in the up front. Um, we know you're going to be so thrilled with what we have promised to do today that we're going to come back to you in 90 days after or 60 days after uh, we deliver this result, and we're going to make sure you're happy. And at that point, we'd love it if you'd introduce us to two other people. So, so here before somebody's even become a customer, you're planting the seed for that. Now, obviously, you have to then have the process to go back and collect those referrals and make sure that they they're happy. But it's such a uh, it's such a strong positive message um, on the front end. We know you're going to be happy. We're going to make sure you're happy, and then we're going to let you tell somebody else how to be happy. So. You know, get over kind of this idea of I'm I'm asking or begging for business. You're you're allowing your customers to actually help somebody else get a great result. Just about a minute left in our conversation with John Jantz, and uh, the final step, step seven, is live by a calendar, which is all about organization. It's essentially mapping out a plan in order to put the first six steps into practice. So, what are the uh, best practices for that? 
Well, so what we like to do is, is I mean, some businesses are great. They can do a whole year plan, and that can be okay. But, uh, you know, then, then life happened. So what we like to think about is, is quarters. You know, let's have two or three major objectives this quarter. Let's map out our content or what we at least think we're going to do in social media and maybe in blogging and things because it makes sense, you know, to, to meet our overall objectives rather than just kind of waiting on, and on Monday like a lot of people do and saying, what should we write about this week? So it keeps you on task. It keeps you focused on your highest priorities so that you don't just get bogged down and, and drifting because, you know, life happens and, and you know, the to-do list blows up and, uh, you know, you don't get to the things that should uh, really move the needle. You're not organized. Things don't happen. And if you don't put them on a calendar, they often don't happen. So, uh, John, excellent uh, advice. We've obviously just scratched the surface. Folks can certainly go to your website to learn more. Thank you very much for your time today. We greatly appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. John Jantz, veteran marketing coach, award-winning blogger, author of Duct Tape Marketing. The new book is The Self-Reliant Entrepreneur, 366 Daily Meditations to Feed Your Soul and Grow Your Business. You can find that at selfreliententrepreneur.com. I'm Greg Columbus, and for more information on this topic, please call Biz Filings at 844-202-0707. Biz Filings, a Walters Kluwer company, has been incorporating businesses since 1996. 